Yo everyone and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be doing a kind of review and get ready with me at the same time of some brand new Aldi makeup. So for those of you that don't know what Aldi is because you don't live in the UK, Aldi is a grocery store and it is a very affordable grocery store and they recently branched out into skincare as well as makeup. Now between you and me, then basically Aldi is just a store that has ripped off pretty much every single brand you can think of, down to their fairy liquid, down to their ketchup. Everything is a copy of something else. Now, I'm going to show you the bits and pieces that I got from my local Aldi. So, I'm going to use these products on camera and discuss them with you, talk through them, and I'll show you some comparisons of which I know they've copied and just to let you guys know what my thoughts are. So the first one is this one here. Now their makeup brand is called Lacura and this is called the Snapshot Ready Foundation Primer, AKA Smashbox Photo Finish Primer. <laughs> now this primer costs $5.99, which is obviously very, very affordable. And it just says Snapshot Ready Foundation Primer Oil Free. And this is what it looks like. As you can see, it is an exact ditto copy of the Smashbox one. So I'm just gonna apply this to my face as I would do my normal primer. Your primer is there to keep your foundation in place all day, stop it moving around, make it last longer. This feels exactly like the Smashbox one, the same sort of silky texture. I have used this already. It actually performs really well and it also keeps my foundation looking great it makes my foundation application really nice and smooth and even so overall this product I'm quite happy with now just bear in mind that I am going to be using other products that Aldi obviously don't have they've only got a very very small range I didn't get everything that I had my eye on from seeing online like the Charlotte Tilbury bronzer highlighter dupe the pixie glow tonic dupe so um, I'm gonna be throwing in other products that I would normally use on a day-to-day -day basis. So I've already done my eyebrows as you can see. Now I'm just gonna prep my eyes using my P. Louise base in the shade Rumor. I'm sure that at some point Aldi will have an entire range. They also had a foundation there, but when I went there it was like at 9.30 at night and the guy I asked to help me seemed to be getting stressed out because he couldn't find what I wanted. And I was just not keen on trying out their foundation because more than likely it wouldn't suit me. The one that they had on display was quite fair. Okay, so that is my eyeshadow primer done. So next I'm going to move on to the foundation that I'm going to use today. It's been a long time since I've used this. The Kat Von D Lock It Foundation. My shade is in medium 57. And it is a very, very, very full coverage foundation. And I'm going to buff it into my skin using this Real Techniques sponge. Okay, next I'm going to do my under eye concealer, which I'm going to be using is the Too Faced Born This Way Multi-Use Sculpting Concealer. My shade is in Warm Beige. And then I'm going to set that concealer using the ColourPop No Filter Setting Powder in the shade Banana. Then I will set my foundation by using the Too Faced Peach Perfect Foundation before I move on to the eyes. And I'll be using an Aldi palette for that. Okay, so now that that is all done, I'm going to be using this eyeshadow palette, which is called Naturals 2 by Locura. Does it look familiar? It should, because it is a copy of the Urban Decay Naked 2 eyeshadow palette. Now, they didn't have Naturals 1, but they had Naturals 2 and another 2. I'll show you one other one, which I got later, but the one I'm using today is this one. So this costs... $5.99. It comes in a tin exactly like the Urban Decay one. And let me just show you a quick comparison of both of them. So here they both are. They both have got 12 shades and this is an, is an exact copy of this 
down to every single shade now they've got different textures some of them and i do have to say that in terms of quality urban decays is better the mattes are definitely a lot more pigmented even though there are only really one two three mattes and then the same in this one the shimmery metallic shades are not as intense as they are in this i've swatched them all and i can definitely see a difference in terms of quality the brushes are very similar as well however urban decays ones are a little bit better there here you can see the difference in the two brushes you get with the palette so the urban decay one has got this flat brush here this one is a little bit more fluffy and then Urban Decay's one has got a round tapered brush, which is a lot more easier to blend. And the Audi one is a little bit more flat. My apologies if I'm standing funny, because it's a bit difficult to balance them on top of each other. But here, hopefully you can see the difference between the two. You can see that obviously the Urban Decay one I've used a lot more than the one above. But the shades that correspond with each other are exactly the same exactly the same there is literally no difference between any of them from, from the black at either end to the first shade which is matte and a yellowy shade but i would definitely say the urban decay one performs a lot better for example one of my favorite shades in the urban decay 2 palette is half baked which is an intense gold this intense gold is not that intense one is a lot more sheer than the other one so for those of you that were interested in terms of quality I would definitely say for $5.99 it's still a very very good palette. I would definitely say the Urban Decay quality is far more superior to the Audi one. So I'm just going to create quite a simple look with this. Nothing too outlandish and extraordinary. And in terms of the names, they've got names that correspond with the shade itself. Um, for example, Vanilla is this first shade here. And Sandy, Orchid, Coin, Lilac, Mocha, Willow, Khaki, Pearl, Champagne, Shadow, Charcoal, obviously being black. So we're going to use this first shade here called Vanilla. And I'm just going to use the brush that they gave me. And I'm just going to apply it without any real finesse all over my eyes. Just to smooth them out, smooth out the primer. See it's a nice matte but it doesn't really kick up much powder. And you've got to go in quite heavy to get a decent amount of product to actually come off. Whereas with the Urban Decay one, obviously more powder comes off. Alright, so I'm going to use this Anastasia Beverly Hills A12 blending brush. And I'm going to use the only matte in the palette that you can really use in the crease, which is called Lilac. And that's that one there. Which is a very kind of mauve taupe sort of shade so I'm just going to go backwards and forwards in the crease see on my medium skin tone this kind of shade is very difficult to show up that's why I would personally say that out of all the Urban Decay Naked palettes it's Naked 2 is probably my least favorite because some of the tones in there are so cool they don't really show up on my skin that much and even with this one I'm having to apply it quite heavily yeah, not much is coming off, but that may just also be because of the quality of the product itself. It just does not bring up much powder. I've got to really dig my brush into it. This is also not blending as well as I would have hoped. I've got a very obvious harsh line here and it ain't blending out. Now these Anastasia brushes are pretty damn good. And I normally don't have to work so hard with it, but... Apparently I do with this eyeshadow palette. Oh my god, this is going to really bug me. It just won't blend out. Let me just use a bit more of that vanilla. See if I can soften it there. Okay, that's helped a little bit. Let me just darken this one a little bit more. Little bit, little bit. See, the thing is, even though these are $5.99, if you go to like a brand like Makeup Revolution, which has affordable prices similar to these Audi ones the quality is far better and Makeup Revolution is another brand that is known for ripping off other brands however at least the quality of the products is still worthy of them ripping it off you know if you're going to rip off something do it properly all right let's try the most difficult shade the black one so we go with this one on the end called charcoal and I'm just going to use this Morphe E17 brush 
and let's just go for a bit of a smoking out over here just dabbed a little bit of it okay it's a pretty intense black considering I only dabbed it in twice and this actually seems to blend a lot better than the previous shade how odd normally it's blacks that are quite difficult all right let's just go back in with that Anastasia brush blend it out a little bit so it's not too harsh go back in with the same brush with no extra product okay all right this black is okay Anastasia brush blend 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 out the black and those harsh lines and then go back in again carry on blending dragging it inwards as I go so that I can have a nice gradient between the lid shade whatever I decide to go with and the black okay I'd say I'm happy with that it took the same amount of time I would say as any other black would take to blend out the grey shade before was a disappointment. Okay, what shade shall we go for the lid? None of these metallic shades look that metallic or shimmery, which is a actual real disappointment. Like, they're not mattes, but they're not anything special. So we're going to use this shade here called Champagne. And I'm going to use this Royal and Langnickel Eye Fluff brush to apply it all over my lid. As I'm wearing grey today, well, I'm wearing denims on the bottom and my top's got red on it, but it's mostly a grey kind of look. Wow, well, that's not really that nice. I mean, it's not very intense. It's a very sad looking shimmer, like a really sad metallic. Like it's had a bad Christmas. Let's fix those blendy bits on the sides. So it blends into it. And then again, just to blend the edges into this sad looking makeup. And that's it for the lid or most of the eye makeup on the top. This shade near the end called Shadow. And I will use my Royal and Langnickel Pro Pencil Blender Brush to apply it down here. It's quite smooth. I do have to say that their eyeshadows are quite smooth. But I definitely would not call them buttery soft. Alright, and now I'm just going to use my Rimmel Scandalized Cold Gargel in the shade Black. Oh my, what a land. Who can actually talk doing that? Uh huh. Yeah. all right none of these shades are good enough or bright enough to go on the tear duct maybe this shade called willow so that's this shade here called willow oh, it's not bad better than nothing i suppose and then just take that original ABH brush to just go around it and on the tear duct suppose it's not too bad but it's not like a silver silver like how it is with the Urban Decay all right just to make it move a little bit more quicker I'm going to use my NYC liquid liner I'm going to do that off camera then I'm going to come back and show you the mascara that I got from Aldi Okay, so next is this mascara, and it's called Too Legit. Now, what does that look like? Benefits there real? Mm-hmm, yeah. Well, that's what it looks like on the inside. And then, unsurprisingly, this is what it looks like, how its wand is. So basically, it is a dupe for Benefits there real mascara. And not gonna lie, it's actually a pretty decent mascara. Even the little ball at the front that helps you to get into those little corner areas works really well. It actually separates my eyelashes nicely and it lengthens them nicely as well. 
so this is not a bad dupe at all it also costs 5.99 as for some reason everything seems to cost 5.99 okay so i'm just going to put on my false eyelashes which are coco lashes in the style stella okay i'm going to just use the same mascara to do my lower lash line you guys know i'm so used to using the maybelline push up angel so this is going to be weird oh it seems to work okay not as good as my maybelline one which is long and thin and this one is fat and spiky yeah it's not bad for the lower lash line but i have still messed it up a little bit not that you can see up close Hmm, now what's this? It's called the Lacura Aloha Bronzer in the shade Aloha, aka the Benefit Hula Bronzer. Looks exactly the same as you can see. Open it up, it's got exactly the same brush. Whoops. And then this is what it looks like. Now I have used this and I have to say Benefit Hula Bronzer is a little bit more warm this one shows up with great difficulty on my medium skin tone. I also personally find the Benefit Hula Bronzer to be a bit more powdery and that's why I tend to go through it quite quick. But it is a very, very pigmented, excellently coloured for so many people type of powder bronzer, a matte bronzer. This one is quite cool toned as you can see. And unfortunately, I will have to pile it on quite a bit for it to show up on my medium skin tone. If they had made it slightly warmer, it would have worked on me. And then that would have been an exact dupe. But they have only really managed to dupe the packaging rather than the shade colour. So I'm going to be using the Morphe M405 contouring brush. Really have to build it up. No powder comes off whatsoever. So it's a nice enough um, bronzer, but I have had to really go in with quite a heavy hand. All right, now I've obviously got stripes on my face. So I'll, I'll sort that out. Uh, just do my nose. Just gonna use my ColourPop no filter powder again, just to tidy up my face. Moving on to their blush, which is called Gold, it's called Gold Blush. And yes, you're right. It looks exactly like our friend Nars. Don't ask me what's happened to my Nars. My Nars palette seemed to go sticky and disgusting. Can you see that stickiness? It's gross. It's like when your oven needs a clean. I don't know what's happened to the packaging, but anyway. And yes, you are correct in thinking this is a dupe for orgasm. Let's put them side by side. Well, as I just said, look at what just happened. Nars's packaging is weird, don't work. Anyway, here they are side by side. You can see the Nars one is a lot more pink to it, a lot more golden tones. This one is a lot paler. I'll be interested to see how it shows up on my medium skin tone because as it is, uh, Orgasm is one of those shades where I have to really pile it on for it to show up. Okay, let's see. Okay, kicks up a bit of colour. Hmm very shimmery there's more shimmer than shade which i know that old orgasm is kind of like that but at least there's a lot more color oh i don't like it oh not a look on all my textured skin no 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 how many layers was that as well like three layers oh my god yeah no <sighs> me no likey me no like the blush if they had maybe made it matte maybe i would have liked it a little bit more but on somebody with textured skin, I don't really use Orgasm for that reason as it is. So maybe in that respect, yeah, okay, it is shimmery like Orgasm. But it's not for me, friends. It's not for me. All right, a highlighter that I'm using, which is not from Audi, is this one from Doll Beauty. It's called Doll Light Shine Bright. And this is gorgeous. I love it. It's going to be using a Morphe M501 pointed blender brush. This is a beautiful champagne-y kind of gold. An amazing highlighter for medium skin tones. For deeper skin tones, they had a deeper shade. Oh, but I do love this highlighter. Look at it. 
All right, so I'm just gonna finish off my lips and the rest of my makeup. I've now used all the Audi stuff that I was going to show you guys on my face. I've got a few other things to show you that I got from their two, like their perfumes or whatever. So just bear with me and I'll be back in a second. On my lips, I'm going to be using ColourPops from the I Love Serahi collection. Um, what's this one called? Curvy uh, Lippy Pencil and Curvy Ultra Glossy Lip. Okay, so I'm back. I just fixed my hair because it was just washed and needed to be straightened. And let me now just show you the few other things that I also got from Audi, which are also dupes of something else. So another eyeshadow palette. Well, this one here, it's called the Naturals Intense Palette. Have you seen this before? Hmm, looks like the Urban Decay Heat Eyeshadow Palette. And is it an exact dupe? Yes, it is again. I used this palette yesterday. I actually prefer it to the Naturals 2 one, but that's just because, like I said, the Urban Decay Naked 2 is my least favourite because I don't generally tend to wear cool tones a lot. So again, it comes in a tin, just like the other palette. Comes with the same kind of brush, same style, same 12 eyeshadows. Let me just compare it now so that you guys can see how it is against the Naked Heat palette. So Naked Heat is on the top and the Aldi one is on the bottom. As before, exact similar shading, pretty much almost exact. However, exactly the same as before the Urban Decay completely outperforms the Aldi one. The Aldi one, the mattes aren't as great, the shimmers aren't as shimmery or metallic, and the shades are not as buttery. So I would definitely still say that the Urban Decay Naked Heat outperforms uh, this one just like the other one. They also had a smoky palette, which is obviously supposed to be the same as the Urban Decay smoky one. I didn't buy that, and I presume that they have a one as well, but they didn't have it in my store. Now, I have used it, like I said, it's okay, same way that this is okay. It's not excellent by any means, but for $5.99, it's not too bad. But if you really wanted to go for the original, I would always say go with the original. $5.99 is not bad for 12 eyeshadows. However, for $5.99, I would also say you could go to Makeup Revolution and get far superior quality eyeshadows. I also picked up two other things. So this one here is called the Lacura exfoliating mud mask what does that look like it looks like the glam glow mud mask now i've not used this this also costs 5.99 it's just everything costs 5.99 doesn't it yeah so basically the same like i said i've not used it yet or anything smells different to the glam glow i have to say and obviously the glam glow is darker in color and slightly smaller in size as well so I'll be interested to see how this performs, if it works in the same kind of way. But I've not, like I said, used it yet. And another thing that I bought was this set. What does that look like? Does it look like Joe Malone, anybody? Yes, it does. So this is called the Luxury Fragrance Gift Set. This cost £15. Now, this is what burns me, yeah? So a very close friend of mine, it was their birthday at the end of November and i actually bought them the gift set which is like this from joe malone it costs 70 pounds this is 15. the scents that they are labeled as are exactly the same as the joe malone ones of a similar name and what i mean by that is this one at the end is called pomegranate now if you're a joe malone fan you would know that there's a, a scent called po pomegranate noir it smells exactly the same the only thing that I would say is that even though the scents are exactly the same, they don't have the same longevity as Jo Malone perfumes. Now, you know there's a reason why Jo Malone is such a lux luxurious brand and such an expensive, expensive brand. Because you can spray yourself once, twice with Jo Malone, and even after having a shower, you can still smell it and you can still smell it the next day. That is just to do with the quality of the ingredients that they use, which then are used to justify their high price point. Now, for those of you out there that still love Jo Malone but can't afford it, like myself, um, 
you will love this let me just show this to you up close so they come in glass bottles same style and everything as joe malone this one here is called velvety rose deep amber lime basil and mandarin freesia and pear and pomegranate so there you have it so these are all the products that i bought um and and that's my review really so i think audi have done a fairly good job at ripping everybody off especially this one i mean where's your originality people come on um but anyway so they've managed to get away with it somehow and that's my review on the products that i've used as well if there's anything here that i would definitely say that you guys would like is the snapshot ready foundation primer is an exact dupe for uh, smashbox photo ready and it performs just as good i would also say that this gift set here of perfumes is also excellent and worth purchasing the eyeshadow palettes not so much i just don't think i will see of them as must-haves and i do and i also don't think that they perform as a kind of dupable brand should and i also do kind of like the aloha bronzer i'm not sure i'm kind of on the fence with it i don't like the fact that it's if you are going to copy benefit at least get the color right which they did not do but overall i think that it would work well on fair skin and fair medium skin tones deeper skin tones you will look completely gray so just stay away from it and i would say the same about the blush as well i'll be interested to see how audi performs in the future as they are slowly starting to release more and more skincare and makeup products but bear in mind everything will be a copy of something else so uh, that's it so let me know what your thoughts are if you've tried anything let me know if there's something I should look into because certain things I don't mind brands that do copy and make more affordable uh, versions of it because at the end of the day it's a competitive market out there. Um, but it's always good to share and learn from each other to see where we can save money and where it's not worth really getting it because it's a bit of a waste. I also think that the Too Legit mascara is also pretty good as well. So that's it. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video, the talk through, the tutorial sort of thing. Let me know what your thoughts are and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye.